Hello everyone, myself Shivangi Desai. I am your instructor for the video series of Python for Data Science. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the multimedia and graphics integration. So let's get started. In this video lecture, we are going to cover these topics which includes restarting the kernel, restoring a checkpoint, performing multimedia and graphics integration, and at last, obtaining online graphics and multimedia. So let's understand all this point in Jupyter Notebook. So our first topic is kernel. A notebook kernel is a computational engine that executes the code contained in a notebook document. Now the kernels are programming language specific processes that run independently and interact with the Jupyter applications and their user interfaces. IPython is the reference Jupyter kernel that provides a powerful environment for interactive computing in Python. Now how to interact with this kernel using this Jupyter notebook? So here are some line of codes. First I have defined a function for addition in which I am adding two numbers and printing the sum of both the numbers. So right now I am calling the function with the value 10 and 20. So let's run this code. Okay, so it will return the sum that is 30. The same way I have defined the code for subtraction and multiplication. So right now my kernel is executing this code. Now if you want to interrupt the kernel, we have this option. So in this menu bar, we have the option kernel. The first option in this menu bar is interrupt. If I interrupt the kernel, you can see the notification is given here that is interrupting kernel. If you want to restart the kernel, then we have the second option that is restart. When I click the restart option, it will show me a pop-up. It will verify that do you want to restart the current kernel? Because if you restart the kernel, all the variables will be lost. Which means the value that we have initialized to all the variables will be lost. So if I restart the kernel, you can see here, it will show us that kernel is ready. Now here, all three functions are already executed. Now, I am initializing the value of this variable a and incrementing the value of a with 5. So now the value of a is 10. Now the next option in kernel is restart and clear output. So when I restart the kernel with clear output, it will give me a pop-up that do you want to restart the kernel and clear all output because all the variables as well as the output will be lost. So when I restart this kernel with the clear all outputs option, you can check now that now all the outputs will be disappeared because now the kernel is restarted with the new variables. So when I run this code directly, it will show me an error that name A is not defined. Why? Because I have restarted the kernel with clear output option and that's why the variable value of A is lost. So first I have to run this code and then only I can get the output for the next one. Now the next option is restart and run all. So when I execute this one, it will show me a pop-up that are you sure you want to restart the current kernel and re-execute the whole notebook because all variables and outputs will be lost. So when I restart and run all cells, all the previously run code will disappear, all the previously initialized variable will be disappear and the code will be re-executed as a whole. So let's restart and run the all cells. Now you can check that one by one all the code is executed and the output is appeared here. And the last option in kernel is reconnect. If you want to reconnect with the kernel, we can choose this option reconnect. So now it will uh, reinitialize the connection with the kernel. Now the next option is checkpoint. Now what is checkpoint? Checkpoints are a notebook specific feature that can save Python programs a huge amount of time and embarrassment when used correctly. So by default Jupyter will auto save your notebook every 120 second to this checkpoint file without altering your primary notebook file. But if you want to provide a checkpoint, the option is appear in this section that is in file. We have the save and checkpoint option. When I click save and checkpoint, you can see here, it will provide us the information about the last checkpoint, which is a few seconds ago. Now, when you save and checkpoint, both the notebook and checkpoint files are updated. Hence, the checkpoint enables you to recover your unsaved work in the event of an unexpected issue. 
You can recover your code from the checkpoint file. It is stored in the same folder that you have stored your notebook file. Now next we will learn about how we can integrate the multimedia and graphics inside our Jupyter notebook. So first we need to understand that when we insert a new cell, the by default the type of the cell is code. Here you can check the type of the cell is code. But if you want to integrate some multimedia or want to provide the headings, we have to change the type from code to markdown. Here the second option is markdown. So when I change the type of the cell from code to markdown, now I can use all this multimedia options. So first is how we can provide the headings. To provide the heading, we have the option of hash. So when I use this hash with space, I can give any heading that I want. So when I run this code, now you can see the Python is written in a heading format. There are three labels when it comes to heading. If I use a single hash, the font size is the larger. When I use two hash, font sizes gradually decrease. When I use three hash, it is comparatively even small. So let's run this code. So you can check here, the size of all these three headers is different. It gradually decreased because we have incremented the number of hash. Now next point is numbers. So when you want to provide a list along with numbers, we have to use this numbers with space. We have to write down the list with the numbers, but we have to provide this space. If I don't provide the space here, it won't give the number style to my list. So let's check this. If I run this code, you can see here, it won't give me the number style. But after providing the space, when I run this code, you can check. Now my data is in the list format and all the data of this list is numbered, right? Now, instead of numbers, if you want to give the bullet, if you want to declare a bullet list, we can do that using this asterisk sign. Using asterisk sign, we have to provide the space and then the data of my list. So let's run this code. So you can check here. Now my list is a bullet list, right? All the data of the list has the bullets. If I remove this space from here, then the output will differ. It will print this star instead of the bullet. So you need to remember to give this space between the star that is our asterisk sign and the content of your list then only you can print your data in a bullet manner now what if you want to bold your text so to bold the text we can use double asterisk sign you can see here we have to use double asterisk sign before and after the part that we want to bold so in this sentence which is this is python programming i want to bold python programming and that's why I have added this double asterisk sign, the start of the part that I want to bold and at the end of the part that I want to bold. Now you need to remember here, we are not supposed to give the space between the asterisk sign and text. So if I give the space here, it won't give the bold effect. If I give the space, it won't give the bold effect and instead it will print this double asterisk sign. So you need to remember we are not supposed to pass the space between the asterisk sign and the text we want to bold. So when I run this code, you can check that the Python programming is bold out from the remaining part of the sentence. Now the same way if you want to give italic style to your text. If you want to give italic style, we have to use a single asterisk sign. Now again, we need to remember this. We are not supposed to pass the space between the asterisk sign and the text, right? So again, we have to use this asterisk sign at the starting of the text and at the end of the text that we want to perform italic, right? So let's run this code. Now you can check here that Python programming is written in italic style. And if I give the space here, it won't give any effect and it will print the text along with this asterisk sign. So you need to remember not to give space between the asterisk sign and the text when you want to perform this italic operation. Now, if you want to highlight some of your text, if you want to highlight a part of your text, 
then we can use this tilde sign at the start and end of the text that you want to highlight so in this this is python programming goodbye sentence i want to highlight python programming i have written that part inside this tilde sign so when i run this code you can check here that python programming is highlighted the text is highlighted in gray color now next how we can add horizontal ruler if you want to add a horizontal ruler we can use three asterisk sign or three dash so let's run this code so you can check here that there are two lines added uh, after the horizontal rule title first one is because i have uh, written this dash and the second one is for the asterisk sign so remember this we can use more than three but minimum we have to use three notation either dash or star both will print the same type of line but we need to use at least three star or three dash to draw a line right less than three will not print the line if i run this code so it will print only double dash and don't print the line but the three star will print the line here now if you want to add the hyperlinks in your jupyter notebook then we have to use this a tag inside the a tag we have to use href parameter inside this href we have to provide the link the link of the source on which we want to redirect our page so in between this a tag i have written this google which means i want to provide the hyperlink on this particular word right here is the closing tag so in this tag i have provide google so when i run this code you can see this that google is underlined so when i click this it will redirect me to the google.com or we can say on the link that i have provided in href right now next is how we can load an image from the online source so to load an image from the online medium we have to use this sign right after this we have to provide a text here i am writing markdown logo is here this is an alternate text it will be printed if the source is not available or there is no image available on this source as we are getting the data from the online medium there is a high possibility the data is removed so we have to provide an alternate text so here is my alternate text that is markdown logo is here and then in round bracket i'm providing the entire source of that particular image so this is the source for the image that is stored on online server so when i run this code it will load the data from the online medium right now it is showing me markdown logo is here because i don't have an internet connection now when i run this code with the internet connection it will display the image from the online medium now the next option is to load an image from the computer itself if you want to load a local image you have to use the tag img inside this img tag we have to provide the path for the image so here in the src parameter i am providing the source or we can say path of that image then we have to provide this alt alt is alternate text so if the image is not present at this path it will print this alternate text next you can set the title for the image as well as height and width for the image so let's run this code so as you can see here it will load the image from the laptop and here when i move the cursor on on this image it will show me the title of the image that is data science and at last if you want to load a video or we can say if you want to embed a video inside the jupyter notebook we have to import the ipython dot display so from ipython dot display we have to import html and inside this html we have to use the iframe tag so inside this iframe tag i am setting the height and width parameters as well as i need to provide the source path i have to provide the source information for this video because i am embedding this video from youtube i am providing this youtube link of this particular video then to set the frame border if you want to apply this frame border we have to use frame border parameter and i am passing this value 0 
and at last if you want to allow your user to play this video in a full screen then we have to use allow full screen parameter so let's run this code so as you can check here the video is loaded from the youtube from the link that i have provided in this src parameter you can run this video here inside of a jupyter notebook as well so this is how we can embed multimedia inside of a jupyter notebook that's it for this lecture thank you